All right. So kind of a quick review here. Uh, basic Pythagorean theorem problem. So we've got a, a right triangle. And remember, Pythagorean theorem only works when there's a right triangle involved. 40. And the answer is not 40. But thank you for playing. Um, the answer is not 90 either. So let's get the equation set up and go ahead and solve it. Now remember the formula says, yeah. How do you know which sides A, B, and C? Ah, good question. How do you know which sides are A, B, and C? The thing to remember is that the legs are your A and B, and they can be switched, and that the hypotenuse is C. The longest side is my hypotenuse, so it has to be C. The 2 and the 6 can change however we want. That, that can flex back and forth. So you plug it into the formula. And this also is going to add something to you may not have gotten before, so kind of tough it out with me, guys. So we get that. We do end up at 40, but we're not done with the problem once we've got that. So 4 plus 36 is x squared. 4 and 36 is 40. And my answer then is x is the square root of 40, which according to my calculator, 40, push the square root button, I get 6.32. Um, if you don't know what to do with rounding, round it to two decimal places. Your chemistry teachers would talk about significant digits. The, the two and the six only have one digit each. So it's kind of a, a bit of a wash there because um, then you should round it to one, one place. So you round it to six. This is in chemistry. What's up? Uh, in form, uh, it's not going to be 6.32. So like like Something like that. I want to make sure I go through that though on its own. Okay. So give me one second to get there. Okay. Are we okay getting the 6.32 as my decimal approximation? No. Okay, what's up? I don't understand why we divided it. We didn't divide it. We, we took the square root. Well, because if 40 is x squared, how do I get rid of that square? No, that would be 2x is 40. 2x equals 40. You divide both sides by 2. This was x squared is 40. The opposite of squaring is to take the square root. That's why I take the square root of it. Uh, also, guys, this is something to think about. If it's an approximately equal to, you're going to see either an equal sign with a dot over it, or you'll see the squiggly equal sign. They, those mean the same thing. They mean approximately equal to or roughly equal to. I've never seen the equal sign. You know, I don't see it very often either, but there are a couple of worksheets I've, I've found over the years for this unit that use that notation. I don't want you guys to be freaked out by it. Now, we had a, a thing up here about... Yeah, go ahead. Um, you like go over how you Divided it. You mean took the square root? Yeah. Okay, well, I've got 40 equals x squared. So to undo the square, I take the square root, which right now means I take my calculator. I type in 40, I push the square root button, and the calculator kicks out 6.32. Which I can always check, too. I can, I can go back and say, does it work out that 2 squared plus 6 squared, does that equal 6.32 squared? And this is, again, I get 40 and 36. This is 40. 40 equals 40. Checks. Now, it also says, give me an answer in simplified radical form. That might be new to you guys, too. So let's take some time on that. I want to write down some numbers here. 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81. And 100. What do they all have in common? They're all perfect squares. So the way you, you put this in simplified radical form is you ask yourself, which of those perfect squares divides evenly into 40? Four. And the 4 is the front runner. So I'm going to rewrite square root of 40 as the square root of 4 times 10. <coughs> square root of 4 is 2. And do any of those numbers divide into 10? Nope. So that's my answer in simplified radical form. I'll be kind of honest with you. In most applications, you don't use 2 root 10. You, know, you don't go to the hardware store and buy 2 square roots of 10 feet of lumber. You, you don't, well, you might do it when you design a car. But that's just so that there's no rounding errors. We usually round for real world applications. But for higher math, you've got to put it in simplified radical form.
So that's also what we're going to call the exact answer. And then this is rounded. So kind of watch for those keywords as to which answer we're looking for. Because, again, on things like quizzes and stuff, I kind of have to hold you accountable to get in the right format. 